live on the ground from Galvanize San Francisco, it's theCUBE, covering Amplify Women's Pitch Night. Now, here's Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're at Galvanize in downtown San Francisco at the Girls in Tech Amplify event, and it's Women's Pitch Night. 10 finalists are pitching their, uh, their company idea to a bunch of venture capitalists in the room. Somebody's going to walk away with 10 grand tonight, which is cool, but hopefully there'll be a lot more money coming out of the VCs to help these businesses get along. And we're excited for our next guest, the co-founder uh, of Result Care, uh, Dr. Mima Gear. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, so Happy give us kind of the quick pitch on Result Care. Yeah, uh, so Result Care is a mobile app that is really a technology platform in the back end that's really servicing the, the core market of medicine and focused around diagnostic testing. What we're doing is we're bringing evidence-based medicine to the point of care to help doctors make complex decisions within seconds while they're seeing patients. So that, so if I hear you right, so I've got my app and I'm going through a diagnostic process with a patient and what you're providing me is more data to help me in my, diagnos my diagnostic process? That's exactly right. And part of this is also centered around the fact that, you know, evidence is coming out every day. Right, right. right. So research articles are getting published all the time. And you often go see your doctor and you wonder, you know, I read this thing in Time Magazine the other day. Well, why doesn't my doctor really know about it? You know, you kind of question sometimes and wonder how current their knowledge is. Right. The reality is when you have 15 minutes to see a patient and you've got 450 thousand papers coming out every year. Right. Only a few doctors are able to keep up with that kind of research. And you want to go to your doctor and really feel like they've got the most cutting edge evidence-based medicine right. that they're practicing. But unfortunately, that's often not the case in medicine. Yeah, it's interesting because there's a lot of conversation, you know, with cover IBM events, Watson, right? And, and, and Watson winning the winning the chess game, but it's really not, uh, a machine is not the best opponent against a person, it's a machine with a person Perfect. is actually the better. And that's yeah. really what you're talking about, you use the benefits of the machine, which is to collect all this data and this ongoing rush of new research and stuff, and combine it with a practitioner who knows the patient and can add a little bit of context. That's exactly right. Oh, that we is awesome. It. So why hasn't this happened <laughs> earlier? I mean, it seems like such a, such a simple such a trivial idea. Thing. Yeah, no. Well, not trivial for sure, but <laughs> certainly logical. Yeah, it seems very logical, and that's exactly how I felt. You know, this company really came out of real life experience. I had a chance to witness medicine on the other side. I was an advocate for my husband while he came, went through a near-death experience after traumatic brain injury. And this was at the end of my training after having learned all this new knowledge. And I was with him in the ICU and looking around me at one of the top institutions in the country and seeing that people really didn't have the time to take care of patients in the way that was required. They really needed to dive into the literature and understand what was happening. And you know, luckily I was there and I was able to do all that kind of work and really you know, micromanage his care in many ways. Right. But not everybody has that physician that's with them advocating for their care. And so I realized we could do this with technology. You know, a lot of the work that I was doing that I was looking up was something that could easily have been brought into a system that the doctor could then access. And I'm also coming into medicine, you know, sort of a next generation doctor. You know, I, I it came out of it with an, a mobile phone. I was using apps while I was training. You know, and this really is the future of medicine. Doctors are tech savvy and they're using applications. Right. But it's about finding the right hook with doctors and making sure that you're answering the questions that they actually need to help their patients. So many questions here. We, we don't have like hours, which we could probably go, but on, on the data collection side, how do you keep current? Because as you said, there's so much material that's coming out. There's so, I mean, there's so many potential ailments that people have. Do you concentrate on a particular area, a, a particular type of diagnosis? How do you keep current on the feed side? That's a great point. You know, right now, the biggest, the largest growing industry in diagnostic testing is molecular testing. And particularly, you think about all the genetics and how that has really taken precedence sometimes over the things that are happening in the lab, in the sense that we haven't figured out how these pieces fit together, but we know how to detect it, right? right? And so what, what's happening with that has really become a data problem, where literature's coming out all the time, and we're lucky, lucky to be at a point where PubMed, which is what we normally use to search our literature, is actually something that you can pull into technology. 
technology. So they're so opening the APIs, they're, they're opening those exactly. databases so you can have access That's to those right. databases. That's right. Okay, so then the other side, as you said, is the behavior mm -hmm. of the doctor. Um, and you said, you said, you know, you're part of the new generation of doctors that grew up with a mobile phone. Right. Um, but, 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 you know, medicine is often, you know, kind of looked upon, uh, not complementary with, with kind of the uptake and, and adoption of new technology. So right. how do you change behavior? Do you have hurdles with insurance companies? And obviously liability is always a giant thing if I'm using this tool and something goes wrong, am I going to get sued? So how are you facing those type of hurdles, which I would imagine are much more difficult than the technology hurdles? Absolutely. Well, what we're bringing, bringing forward is not necessarily our opinion. We're bringing forward the evidence, and we're allowing the doctor to make the decision, and that's the key, because they're the ones in front of the patients, and they're the ones seeing the symptoms, whether it's over video conference or what have you, and it's really up to them to use our information in the way that they believe is correct. Our goal is to simplify that information and deliver it, and deliver it to them so they can make the best decisions. Just, I'm just looking at your seven word description, bringing evidence-based medicine to revolution. It's just so scary that, that, that that's put in a startup that is trying to get pitched tonight when you would assume that that's been going on all along. But it's really better evidence, more current evidence. That's right. That you're trying to that's bring right. in broader evidence. Absolutely, absolutely, and access to evidence. Right, so where are you in terms of the company growth? How long you've been at it? How many folks are you now? Kind of what you looking for this money to do for the next round? Absolutely. Well, we have a core team of four people. Um, uh, we're, we're really looking to raise $1.5 million to take us to the next level. And you know, we've done a tremendous amount with the little that we raised from friends and family. We have both an iOS and an Android app that are now in pilots, both at UCSF and Kaiser. We've also got a contract in the works with, with one large diagnostic testing company. And so, um, in addition to that, we built a, built a huge platform in the back end that's carrying over 3,000 tests and diagnoses already. So we made a tremendous amount of progress. Our next steps are really to bring on the labs, to bring on the innovations, and to acquire more users. And do you have to partner with, say, like at Kaiser, I assume they have some internal systems that, that they've got their folks on. Do you integrate with that, or it's just like, it's <laughs> you're the, no, this is the pocket app that they put on their phone. How does that yeah. how does that work? We're sort of using the Slack strategy. You know, so what we're doing is we, are, we know what we created is really valuable to doctors. We've tested that. And we're, we're, we're literally taking it out to the top academic institutions with internal sales and really getting our providers to start using it. Right. And after that, after you reach a critical, a critical mass, we're going to the hospital administrators and saying, look guys, people love this and they want to use it. And so that's really how we're getting our users onto this. Very exciting stuff. Uh, good luck to you for, for all of our benefit, I guess, Thank really to, to bring that data to the doctors so they can make better database decisions. What a concept. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Dr. Mimigir, so where can people find out more information? Well, they can come out to resultcare.com and we're also on Facebook and on Twitter. Okay, super. So you got all the social bases covered. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for spending a few minutes and good luck tonight. Absolutely, thank all you so much. All right, Dr. Mimigir from Result Care. I'm Jeff Frick. You're watching theCUBE. We're galvanizing downtown San Francisco. Thanks for watching.